Anybody who has their videos on. All right, great. Um, my name is Ashley Rufer, and I work at the Fort Collins Senior Center. And I know that a lot of you are kind of up and down the front range. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the things that we offer at the Fort Collins Senior Center. Um, but keep in mind that even if you're not close by, um, we still have virtual opportunities. And I highly recommend we work very, very closely with all of the senior centers up and down the front range. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be covering today please take a look at your local senior center and make sure um, you see what they're offering as well. So I'll go ahead and start and um, share my screen. And I think it should be good. If you have your video on, give me a thumbs up if the screen's working. Can you see? Awesome. Yeah, the screen is working. You're good. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. So the Fort Collins Senior Center um, has been around for quite a while. Um, it is part of our recreation department as a whole with the city. Um, so I also always keep in mind for everyone, um, we have a lot of different facilities. So when I talk about the Senior Center, I'm also talking about all of recreation. Um, so we'll kind of go through some of the, the different facilities that we have and some of the different programs that we have. So um, for those of you who are not familiar, um, we have all of our programs in what's called our Recreator. It's our publication that comes out three times a year. Um, if you can see my screen, I don't know, but it's a big book. Um, basically it has every single thing that we offer within the city that is fun. And I like to say that um, I've been in this position now for about 13, 13 years. And I am just having fun. All I'm doing is facilitating fun um, with what I do. So um, we have 10 city facilities in town. Some of these facilities are um, pools, there are gymnasiums, there's pottery studios, um, there's an outdoor pool. So we have a whole bunch of different facilities and all of them gear, um, are geared towards different um, age groups. So the senior center specifically is an 18 and up facility. So it's the only one that we have in the city that is strictly an adult facility. Um, as far as special events go, that's my thing. So I'm gonna talk about those in a little bit. Um, I do all of the special events, social programs, volunteers, adult day trips, um, our theater troupe, you name it. I'm having fun and facilitating that fun. Uh, we also like to say that we are a hub for all things senior related in um, the community. So people can come to us and we have um, tons of information. Um, we pride ourselves on making sure we go to reach out to different community groups. We work th with Volunteers of America. We make sure that if people need um, resources at all that we can at least give them information, phone numbers, websites, um, so that they can lead the best lives that they can. So we have um, what's called a senior center membership. And I'm gonna try to stay away from talking about fitness today because I know we're talking about hobbies. Um, so this is actually a good one to bring up. A lot of people think, oh, do I have to have a pass to this facility? You don't, you can pay a drop-in fee um, or you can get what's called a senior center membership that's only $30 a year. And that gets you access to come into the facility and you can, do anything from um, play billiards, um, have coffee in the lobby. You can attend any of our um, Friday afternoon movies that we have in our beautiful 150 seat theater. Um, there's so many things that you can do on this just senior center membership that's strictly for social programs and for interacting and making sure that you're keeping up with your hobbies. There's arts and crafts um, related to that. Um, it's just a great, easy way for you to say, I think I can spend $30. We also have scholarships as well, but um, $30 for an entire year is, you know, pennies per day. So um, I always like to bring up that. We also have our um, fitness programs. We have an entire fitness wing. In 2014, we did a large multi-million dollar remodel and we added to the three separate wings of our facility. One of them being our fitness wing, um, it's really state-of-the-art technology. Um, it's designed after one of our more kind of competitive gyms in town. 
but we have a lot of stuff that um, like recumbent bikes and things that are a little bit less stressful on the body. Um, we have, I would say anywhere from 50 to 60 people working out upstairs at one time. We also have personal trainers as well. So that's kind of our fitness wing and that's kind of all I'll talk about that. We definitely have classes and stuff, but I'll let you check out those um, at fcgov.com. And I'll give you all the information at the end of this presentation. As for social programs, some of those things that I was discussing earlier, um, people, I would say there's at least, I don't know, 30 people that come every single day and sit in our lobby with their friends and really um, just have a great time. And I mean, they're, sometimes they're there longer than I'm there for in my eight hour work day. <laughs> and they're playing cards and games. Um, they're really utilizing their mind and their social skills. So all the social programs we have are listed in our recreator, but I did wanna name um, just a few of them that we have. And the social aspect is more um, stimulation, you know, for your brain, but also it's really gonna help you to develop um, those relationships um, that hopefully moving forward, you can have a friendship that leads to exploring additional hobbies in your life. So some of the stuff that we have, um, we have sing-alongs and jam sessions where you just bring any instrument um, that you can play halfway and come and jam. Um, we have a writer's group actually that has a, a great following um, where you come and express yourself through writing and they gather weekly. Um, we have a program that is specifically designed for 70 plus and that's called, and then it is winter. And it is about, I would say anywhere from 30 to 50 people each week. And they're just talking about topics related to being 70 and older. Um, I, we have a donut make you wonder group. <laughs> and that's one of my favorite groups um, where they sit, have coffee and donuts and talk about current events. Um, we have our soap troop acting group, which is one of my favorite groups. And they put on two theater performances a year. We have people in the group that have performed on Broadway, um, people that are professional opera singers and who are just trying to get back into the, uh, they still have that acting bug and still wanna perform. Um, and it's a great, great program. Um, some of the other things, I, I mean, I could go on for hours and hours and I don't wanna bore you with all the social programs, but we just have a lot going on. Um, I would recommend checking it out. Um, we also have clubs and organiza organization events. So one of the um, very, very large programs we have at the Fort Collins Senior Center is called Front Range Forum. Um, they are a club organization that is still part of the, the Fort Collins Senior Center, but basically it's a continued education group who is determined to continue their learning um, for the rest of their lives. They're lifelong learners. These are ex-educators, um, very, very smart group of people. There's about a hundred, I would say a hundred people um, involved in that. And they meet several times um, a week and they volunteer to give certain presentations on certain topics. So that's a great group to become part of. It's called Front Range Forum. Um, they also have their own website if you wanted to look that up. Again, I'll kind of touch on the community resources. Um, we have, uh, we, we do a lot of partnerships. So we have Volunteers of America come in and serve um, lunch programs. It's a very, very reduced lunch, but also it's a great opportunity to socialize. Um, and then you can stay and practice some of your hobbies. Um, let's go to the next slide. So here is just some of the fun things that we do. Um, we have a woodworking studio. Um, that studio is incredible. I always like to say, you could literally get rid of your entire garage and come into the woodworking studio and you'd have every single tool that you could ever imagine. Um, so we do anything in that, um, in that room. We do basket weaving. Um, we do stained glass. Um, we just started doing hand building pottery at the senior center. We actually have a pottery studio downtown Fort Collins, but we are now, we've moved, um, it's grown so much that we had to actually um, put wheels and, um, and kilns in one of our studios at the senior center because it's become so popular. Here's our theater group that I talked about. They are such a fun group. Um, our outdoor recreation program is very, very popular. As you all know, in, um, in Colorado, outdoor recreation is huge. Um, one of the big things that usually keeps people from 
going out and hiking is being alone. Um, we have trained professionals who are um, certified and know their way around the mountains um, to lead small groups. Um, and we have different levels that you can attend. Some of it is just straight um, flat hiking if you want a little bit more intense. Um, sometimes it'll be an all day hike. Um, so we have a lot of great outdoor adventure programs and I always highly recommend checking those out. Our dances, we just recently were able to bring our dances back last year. Um, I know dances are huge up and down the front range. Um, and most of the senior centers I would say will have social dancing. Um, live bands, I would say anywhere from 50 to 100 people at every single dance. Uh, you don't have to bring a partner. You can just show up. Um, we make sure that everything is fair. We do specific dances where you have to switch partners. Um, it's anything from line dancing to classic ballroom um, or just having fun and being able to socialize. We also have a billiard center. Uh, the billiards room has four tables. And then that picture in the back, if, I don't know if you can see, but the table behind him has a bunch of red balls on it. That is actually snooker. I don't know who knows the game snooker, but we're one of the only places in Fort Collins that has a snooker table. So it's pretty well utilized. Uh, we actually just got them recovered and they're, it's a, a beautiful little um, area. Cards. I mean, who doesn't love a game of cards? <laughs> we have um, different, we're, we're playing cards at all hours, all the time, but we have specific days where if you love Canasta, let's say, you can actually look on the schedule and say, oh, I wanna come in and play Canasta. I don't have any friends currently who are playing it, but we have people who are. Um, I'm hoping to start a Euchre um, day, but I don't, I, I'm from Michigan, so I don't know if they have too many people here that love Euchre as much as I do, <laughs> but, um, yeah, cards and games. Mahjong is very, very big at our Fort Collins Senior Center. We have at least two days dedicated to Mahjong. Um, puzzles in the lobby. We always have at least two puzzles ongoing. Um, I know I'm out there interacting with people on a daily basis, and it's a great place to, if you just want to come in, do a puzzle, get your brain working, and meet people. Um, great opportunity. And then, as I mentioned before, we also have our Friday afternoon movies. We do them every other week. Um, we play anything from new releases to old classics, and we have a popcorn machine and just a great, great way to, to kind of meet people, kind of socialize. But if you just want to sit and you don't feel like talking that much, you can watch a good movie. We had 60 people actually at our last movie, which was a lot. People are definitely coming back. And then we'll say, don't forget about the fitness opportunities. Um, these are also hobbies, I think, that people have, have really... You start to understand as you're getting older, and I think we all agree that um, a hobby can keep you as active as you can possibly be. So I don't know if you all have heard of pickleball. I'm sure you have. That's one of the big, big things nowadays. Um, but that's also a hobby that people have getting, been getting pretty competitive with. So um, we offer pickleball every single day of the week in our gym uh, for at least five hours every day. Um, we also have fitness programs where, you know, you could just be sitting in a chair doing some aerobics and meet a whole bunch of friends. I'm um, in the middle picture there. That is a picture of just, I would say, maybe a fifth of the gym that we have. So um, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty big gym. And then we also have our pool um, on site that is the warmest city pool in Fort Collins. Um, we always have two lap lanes available for swimming. And then we have aquatics classes. Um, water volleyball is one of the most um, most common or most exciting programs because we have a group called this uh, the Soggy Bottom Women and they get together and they play water volleyball um, at least three times a week and then they go out for breakfast afterwards. So great hobbies, um, great fun, and great ways to keep engaged. Um, so. Here is the number at the front, uh, at the top, if you wanna write that down. That's if you just have any questions, the front desk is always happy to answer. Sometimes we're busier than others. So if you have to wait for a little while, I apologize. Um, but the front desk loves answering any questions you might have. You can also visit um, www.fcgov.com backslash recreation. Now the recreation isn't gonna take you directly to the senior center page. It's gonna take you to the recreation page. But like I said, 
we want to make sure to, that there's adult programs all over the city. So we don't want to just say, just come to the senior center. We want you to explore all of the recreation opportunities that we have. You're also more than welcome to visit any facility at any time. You don't have to pay to get in just to have a tour or to walk around. And then one of the most important things that I always say is your hobby could be volunteering. Um, I will say that this PowerPoint was actually made by one of our volunteers. Um, I rely so heavily on volunteers and I think that they get such a, such a, um, such a love of being involved in the community from volunteering. Um, we have anything from special event volunteers to guest service volunteers, um, data entry. Um, and I will say that every single day, I definitely get a hug from a volunteer knowing that they're coming out of their house, feeling engaged in the community and meeting new people. So um, this is kind of a little map, but it's a little bit hard to see, but that's how many facilities we have kind of all over the city. Um, we're, it's pretty impressive and we're building another one next year. So we're excited about that. So with that, um, I think I hit my 20 minute mark right on, right on the dot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna see if anybody has any questions for me. Lively bunch. <laughs> uh, what's that um, Carnegie Center for Creativity? <laughs> oh yeah. The Carnegie Center is part of a, the um, city facilities. It is downtown, it's in an old historic building. It's beautiful. Um, recreation doesn't run a ton of programs out of there, but I know that they're working on doing a remodel actually, and it's gonna be beautiful. They work mostly with um, the Poudre River Library and it's gonna be, it's gonna be very, very cool. Uh, I see a Jackie is unmuted. I don't know if Jackie, you wanna speak, but I did just see you're unmuted if you wanted to ask a question. Oh, I wanted to know if they had a facility in Aurora. So the city of Fort Collins doesn't. Um, Aurora, does Aurora have a senior center? I would be shocked if it did not. All right, that's what I'm thinking. Um, you know what I can do, Jackie, is I can kind of, when I send my email out to everyone, I'll even just uh, send a few um, notes about different things, the different senior centers in the areas mm -hmm. um, around kind of Fort Collins, the Birth at Loveland, and the Denver Lakewood area. Um, okay, trying to kind you. of be helpful with that as well. Oh yeah, he has just, oh, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Oh, there is one. Yep. We, uh, thank you. 30 West Delmar School. Um, and Kaz just put it in a uh, link in the uh, chat for. Oh. So. May I ask a question about the, uh, the Carnegie building that does back up to the Poudre Valley uh, Library in Fort Collins? What kind of events are being planned there? We would go to art shows there. Mm -hmm. But what are being planned in the future after the remodel? Do you have any idea? I wish I did. Um, I know I did talk to you. So that's run by um, the Lincoln Center. Okay. So, so that's actually part of, um, so there's a big umbrella of community services in Fort Thank Collins. You. And part of that is recreation, the Lincoln Center, the gardens at Spring Creek. So we're all kind of under the same umbrella. Okay. But I know, um, I did talk to the director and he, he, I don't think they know yet, but I know that they're working on it and Good. the remodel is going to be beautiful. Super. It's a lovely building. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And I saw something in the chat. Did someone say we are an 18 and over um, facility at the senior center? Which one of the big things is not tripping over children when you're walking around. <laughs> I have two little ones of my own and I'm trying not to trip over them all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. I think that's awesome. it. I don't see anybody else unmuted, so. Great. Well, with that, I just wanted to thank you all again so much for listening to me talk for 20 minutes. I love what I do. And if you have any additional questions, um, hopefully, uh, can you send out my email when you send out the PDFs? That would be awesome. Feel I absolutely will. Great, feel free to email me anytime. Um, I love talking recreation and how we can support your hobbies. Speaking of hobbies, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Kaz 
and um, they're going to talk about the Denver Public Library and all the hobbies and opportunities that you can play with there. Thank you. Um, so, hey, everybody. Uh, let me get my slides loaded up here and I'll tell you a little bit about me and where I work. All right. Okay. Um, so I work for the Denver Public Library. Um, because I know we have people from all around the state, I am going to look for ways to plug things that I think are happening at most Colorado libraries. Um, and also virtual stuff where we've got it. Um, I am also an Ashley. So um, I, for the sake of keeping things simple, I'm gonna go by Kaz just so you can keep us straight. Um, so um, I work at the Central Library downtown most of the time. Um, presently, instead of it being this lovely, beautiful rendering, it is under construction. So I am at one of our branch locations today. Um, my background is in a lot of like textile crafts, so um, sewing, spinning, knitting, weaving, uh, and then I also have, through this job, done a lot of tech stuff too. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk generally about library things that are happening. I'm sort of contractually obligated to talk about general library service before I tell you about my exciting weird job. Um, so the big thing that we have going on right now is winter of reading. Um, during the months of January and February, we basically have, we take the concept of summer reading that we do for kids, but have it for adults. Um, you, if you live in Colorado, you're eligible to get a library card with any library in the state for free. Um, so if you want a Denver library card, you can totally sign up online. You don't have to physically come into our building. Um, and if you wanted to get back into reading and the idea of having a prize at the end would motivate you, um, you can totally visit this website. Um, I will have a slide deck shared out afterwards that will have all this info so you could go um, to different links. Um, we also have um, just like little activities you can do at home, um, some coloring sheets that are not just like for kids, if you just want something kind of fun to do, um, all on our website. Um, the other thing, oh, I feel like I skipped a slide. Oh no, I just did it out of order, my bad. Um, the other thing that I know uh, is available at every library in the state, um, is the ability to check out a pass for the state parks. Um, they usually come in a backpack. I can't remember if they've updated the backpacks to still be this like gray camo or if they're red this year, um, but they come with like um, a brochure and a map and like wildlife identification guides and a compass. Um, it's all very nice and very cool. Um, our library system has um, cameras and Chromebooks and internet hotspots and sewing machines that you can check out. Um, a lot of libraries are starting to offer kind of not just books, not just DVDs anymore. Um, so if you, if you haven't been to your library recently, that's kind of a fun thing to check out to just see what they might have available. Um, and our library, like many others, has a lot of programming that we do, like workshops, um, classes, events that are just for older adults. We do lots and lots of things that are for kids and families and intergenerational groups, like people of all ages. Um, but we have a team that is dedicated to offering things like just exclusively for people above the age of 50. Um, and so even just in the last couple of months, they've done some um, writing clubs, both like fiction and poetry. They've done some, everybody reads a book and they meet on Zoom to talk about it. Um, we do tech classes, tech appointments, um, sessions about cooking and gardening and making music and tons and tons more. 
Um, all of our events end up getting posted on our website. Um, we do have like physical, um, I wish I had one handy. Um, they have like little brochures that we print out that have everything that's happening in a month. Um, but the easiest way for you all at home to access that is just by going to the website. Um, so if I did not say this explicitly, but um, if you were reading the very first slide, um, my job title is the extremely descriptive idea lab program administrator. And some of you might be thinking, what is idea lab? Um, so uh, idea lab is the name that we have given our maker spaces uh, and a maker space is kind of just what it sounds like. It is a open available space where people can come in and make whatever it is that they are interested in. Um, so the photo on the left is from a repair workshop that we did at our central library. And then uh, the picture on the right is from uh, our newest uh, lab in Central Park, where I think this was making ornaments. Um, but our model is very much designed for anybody to drop in. And we have tons of tools and technology and craft supplies and people who are there to help you get started. Um, so this is a map of the city and where each of our current locations are. Um, there are spaces like this at a lot of the big library systems throughout the state. Um, they will usually have different names. Um, usually they involve some variation of like make or lab or creative hub or something like that. Um, there are only a handful of us. So if anybody, when we get to the end has questions, I might, I might know everybody, but um, anyway, the, the whole point is these are, these spaces are spread in libraries throughout the city of Denver. Um, kind of geographically all across the city. And um, they all have kind of similar things. So everybody's gonna have computers, everyone's gonna have basic hand tools, everyone has sewing machines, um, jewelry making supplies, but the um, kind of what specifically there is, is gonna be, um, uh, relevant to each community. So um, I will say this out loud for anybody who is just like listening and not seeing slides. Um, the Central Library downtown is our original lab, um, but we also have spaces like this at our uh, Montbello Library in the far Northeast, our Sam Geary Library, which is in Central Park, uh, also the neighborhood formerly known as Stapleton. Uh, the Hamden Library, which is where I am today, uh, which is kind of down close to the Tech Center. The Hadley Branch, which is kind of the southwestern part of Denver, just off of Federal. Uh, and then our Corky Gonzalez Library, which is very close to um, Mile High Stadium. Um, so the closest intersection there, I believe, is Federal and Colfax. Um, and we have plans to build more. Um, they're kind of still in progress and don't have a timeline, but hopefully more are coming soon. All right. Um, so a lot of times when people hear about this idea, they're like, well, what are people doing? Um, and we do have a lot of really cool um, technology like 3D printers and laser cutters. Um, but the most popular things that go on in our spaces are people sewing and using sewing machines, um, which is the picture I have on the left. Um, perler beads, which are like these little plastic beads that you lay out and then you melt them with an iron, um, which I feel like was a craft that came out in like the 70s and has just suddenly had a exciting resurgence. 
Um, that's what the kids who are working on here in the middle, although I think there are many things that are happening in that picture in the middle. Uh, and then just like a lot of craft activities using materials you might have around the house or just like common craft items like popsicle sticks and googly eyes. Um, but that's not also not to say we don't have wonderful, beautiful, more specialized projects. Um, so in the slide that I have here, there's like a, a little wooden house that was a, a student project. Someone was working on a, um, I think, a intro to architecture class they were taking in high school, and they were able to make these models um, on the laser cutter. Um, the lanterns that are in kind of the bottom left were actually made as part of um, an ongoing workshop series that we did for older adults, where we taught them how to use a graphic design software, how to cut something with a laser cutter, and then we assembled them and added in lights so that they could be these beautiful lanterns. Um, lots of jewelry projects, um, lots of robotics. Um, shockingly, I think the only thing I don't have a picture of is something that is 3D printed. Um, when I end, I'll show you, I have something in my pocket actually that is one of my little silly things that I have made, but um, but if you are somewhere where you are not nearby any of our physical locations, or if you just don't want to drive, um, we also have a bunch of um, instructional guides of like projects that you can make with things that you might have around the house. Um, I have kind of a screenshot of what that page looks like um, and a link where you can get more ideas. Um, and this will all be shared out afterwards. Um, so yeah, I'm open for questions and I'm ready to hear about like, if there are things that you all enjoy making. Um, and before I forget, this is my tiny, little 3D printed keychain. It's one of Hello Kitty's friends. Um, Cass, so I, saw, I have someone in the chat. Did you see that? It was just asking about sewing and learning crafts and other branches. Mm -hmm. So, um, and thank you for asking that, Pamela. That was why I kind of voiced out where on the map we were. Um, most libraries have uh, some regular program that they do that has to do with crafts or art. Um, the other five neighborhood locations that I mentioned before um, have open hours every day. So if there is something that you are wanting to learn, um, you can just show up and we will help you and we'll figure it out together. You don't have to worry about like making an appointment or anything like that. Any other questions for Kaz or just in general about hobbies? I'll kind of again keep an eye on the microphone if you want to mute yourself. Or you can put it in chat if you don't feel like chatting. If you don't feel like voicing, you can certainly just ask your question in the chat and we'll read that out loud for you. Anyone? Oh, we'll go back to bring it to. I'll just add in, I think that's really cool that you have, I just wrote that down, um, the ideas so that you can do them at your own leisure. Um, that's really, really a great idea. I might actually steal that. <laughs> <laughs> they are freely available and they are open source, so you can take whatever you like. Um, that's great. And, and we definitely have painting and drawing supplies in all of our labs too. Um, the, I'm going to turn and see if I have any good examples behind me that are within reach. Um, let's see if I can tip my camera just a little bit. Um, I was like, I'm sitting in a lab, so I have other people's examples behind me. I have some, uh, art pieces that are behind me, uh, including this lovely, like mixed media piece and, um, 
a painted tote bag. So we do a lot of different activities. Um, but yeah. Oh, that's a cute one. Did you just read? It's not everyone's type of fun and maybe not really a hobby, but virtual bingo once a month is fun. I think that sounds great. <laughs> I think my friend Josh, who works on the bookmobile, is uh, the one who is the usual face of the Denver Library's bingo program. I love it. Um, and I do, I think it is great. Like, and Ashley, uh, Kaz, uh, you were saying just, there is, there is a lot of virtual things, which is super. Um, I think that is important, um, especially in, you know, at, though, it, though it does look beautiful out there now, um, it was snowy and cold, at least in Metro Denver. Um, so it is kind of nice to be able to have the virtual option if you don't feel like getting out and about, especially during the winter winter months. Oh, someone loves Josh. <laughs> Um, all right, I so we will again, I will get all of this information out to everyone. Um, I will certainly make sure that Kaz and Ashley have their information also included. Um, so you, I you saw can, that oh. Pamela has a raised hand. I just don't. Does she? She does. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Pamela, have you, do you, are you unmuted? I, maybe this is for later. But um, I just wanted to make comments about how these kinds of activities are so helpful on your well-being. I've been isolated. I had a couple of med medical procedures, and I've been isolated for like three months. And it is very, very depressing. And uh, I, I can't wait to get out and learn to sew and just be with other people. I cannot wait. And uh I'm not driving. My kids don't think I should drive because I can fall asleep right away and things like that. So, but you have a little help. So Pamela, call us and we'll get you a volunteer so we can get you to the volunteer, so we can get you to the libraries. Thank don't, you. Don't give up thank on you. those hobbies, Pamela. Okay. Don't give up. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I, I forget about that. Yes. I, thank you. Yeah. Well, that's my, that's my next thing was how can I get a little help with that? But that, that's the other question. Thank you. Yep. Um, anyone else raise hand? Again, question. We definitely have some time. I always go ahead. Let, let me see if I can. Um, un no, oh. I can't. I can't do it now because my wife's on the phone. So I'll, I, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, no, she's off now. Okay, okay. I was going to say my wife and I went, uh, she organized it to Fort Collins library and we did pour painting so you had to mix three paints together and then pour them and of course i wasn't worth a nickel but marvelous marvelous came out pretty good and they had written uh the name on the back and they had to leave it there of course because it's wet it's the dickinson so you have to do it and there was another one which i didn't get to go to um it was making a rug out of t-shirts I thought that would, but I don't know how that worked because I didn't get to go. But uh, if it comes up again next time, next time, hopefully, I've got a whole bag of t-shirts. My wife made me cut up. You know, I had so many memories on those old t-shirts with paint spots on them, and she made me cut them up anyway. But I don't know where they are now. <laughs> so if I ever find them and that comes up, then I'll be down for that. So I'm just commenting on those. That's all. Yeah, uh, that's funny, the t-shirt thing, I was just going to comment. I have a friend who takes some um, old t-shirts and she makes them into blankets, um, which I think is a very cool little hobby as well, especially for, you know, like you said, you have a lot of memories of uh, maybe you went to a concert or you attended something or, yeah, um, I think that is a pretty cool little hobby to have as well. Oh, she might have wants me to do one more thing. Have you got time for me yet? Sure. Okay, this is what I've been doing for a few years. This is the needle point. Wow. And this That's is going to this is gonna go on a model is gonna put it on a stool, one of those soft stools you can sit on. Um I'm a barber and a, a needle point shop just happened to open up next uh, in a shop next to mine. And that's how I got uh, started on that. Okay. 
That'll keep you busy. That's a great hobby. <laughs> Anyone else, any other comments or anything that they'd like to uh, share? We, again, we have time if you'd like to share anything or have any questions for um, our two Ashleys. Well, I was just wondering, um, I think I asked somebody else this recently, but it would be really great if in Fort Collins, if we had daytime dancing instead of evening. Like, like the dances, but during the day? Because mm. yeah. we have a lot of dance classes, you're right, but because um, like our line dance classes are during the day, in the middle of the day, stuff like that, but we don't have social dances, you're right, during the day. Hmm. Yeah, like contra or waltzing or foxtrot or line dancing or anything. We have line dancing classes if you're interested. Um, those are, I believe they start at 1230 on Tuesdays. And we're actually adding for the summer, I'm inputting it right now, um, we're adding another three or four options because it's become so, so popular. Um, so we're adding classes at night. So maybe some of the people that are coming during the day will switch tonight and then we can, you could come. We'd love to have you join us. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'll give it just a couple more, couple more seconds here, but, um, again, thank you, um, to all of you who attended. Thank you, Ashley and Kaz, for um, giving your presentations and sharing the wealth of information to everyone. And again, we'll get that all out to you. Um, thank you to Kaiser Permanente for partnering and be our, being our sponsor um, on these little talks. Um, please do join us. We So we're in January, February. We will have another little talk in March. And next month, we have our virtual excursion, which is just super fun, I think. We're going to Thailand. So we're gonna get you some um, drinks, um, both uh, non-alcoholic and alcoholic that are um, indigenous to uh, Thailand area as well as food. So I hope you join us in February as well as we take our little uh, virtual trip um, to Thailand and then join us again in um, March. So thank you, um, it's been a pleasure and um, enjoy the rest of your, what looks to be now a sunny uh, afternoon in Colorado. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone.